1964. America doubles its support to Vietnam with over 23,000 troops on the ground. Casualties also double. Commanders want to ramp up air support for troops, but there is a problem. The guys would fly through the anti-aircraft and missiles and get to their target, and it was so obscured by weather they couldn't attack accurately. And the North Vietnamese, they could see you with radar through the clouds, and you couldn't see them. Now, the untold story of how the NRO accomplished what NASA couldn't, solving the problem of cloud cover, giving troops at war the first real-time imaging support in history, and moving a special satellite from the drawing board to outer space on a deadline everyone said was impossible. 100 days from the day we said go. After a number of spectacular and costly failures to launch surveillance satellites, President Eisenhower received some welcome news. NASA announced they had taken the first ever satellite photographs of the Earth. It was April 1st, 1960. Eisenhower joked that it had better not be an April Fool's Day prank. It wasn't. NASA's newly launched Television Infrared Observation Satellite, or TYROS, had taken the historic images with a simple Viticon television camera. A few months later in August, the equally historic first Corona satellite photos were recovered, and the high resolution was sure to put the NASA photos to shame. And they discovered an interesting thing, clouds, which they should have known looking at the Tyros data. Undaunted, NRO leadership contacted NASA. Could their Tyros satellites help by scouting for breaks in cloud cover? NASA was supposed to provide weather support to the Corona program, and they were not able to do it. They had the Tyros vehicles, but the Tyros vehicles were inertially stabilized and not Earth-oriented. So you got a series of pictures that were scanning the Earth, and they were very difficult to have any use. So the NRO quickly implemented their own program to build mission-specific weather satellites. And the unforgiving deadline only foreshadowed things to come. You know, the program was given 10 million in nine months to be successful or dead. Later known as the Defense Meteorological Satellite Program, the DMSP did succeed. Their satellites were effective cloud cover scouts for the Corona program. They also held the most promise for dealing with cloud cover in Vietnam. I came in in December of 64. I was a major. So I got involved in planning the operation of moving the weather satellite uh, into Vietnam. The month prior to Major Kulpa's arrival was brutal. Viet Cong shot down six U.S. planes, killing six of 15 crew members. Kulpa's team was quickly tasked to build a Vietnam-specific weather satellite. However, the deadline would push NRO resources to their limits. 100 days from the day we said go, to the day we launched and operating, and we had to put a ground station into Vietnam in between. And so we really moved very rapidly. We had to literally midnight requisition parts from other satellite lines. We um, took parts of both our production line and the Tyros production line and designed a satellite which was very similar to the satellite we had been using before. Except the satellite we were using before had one camera pointing straight down. We put three cameras on it so we could look from horizon to horizon. One looking straight down and two can it. And they overlap. They, they gave you sort of a, a bow tie type of, of coverage, but very, very large coverage. The um, ground station was some old vans that were used for radio receptions and we modified the transmitter but the antenna was the same. Installed in Saigon at Tonsonut in three months. We also changed the satellite such that any time it was in view of Vietnam, it broadcast every picture it took. Meanwhile, pressure was mounting to launch on time. The Air Force and Navy were losing 
anywhere from a plane a day to some days four or five airplanes. If you could avoid the guy getting shot down, that was the best thing you could do. Knowing what the clouds were wouldn't guarantee that, but it would help. And it was just, there was a huge stress. On May 19, 1965, the new Vietnam-specific DMSP satellite moved to the launch pad at Vandenberg Air Force Base. It was day 99. We probably broke some procurement regulations in doing it. I'm, I'm not sure. But what happened was that in 100 days, we launched the satellite and it was operating. The commanders loved it, primarily because they saw what the weather was instantaneously. So the people in Vietnam got the picture immediately. Real time, right there, real time. In just 100 days, the NRO had permanently changed the dynamics of war. The commanders would not decide the missions for the day until they got that satellite picture. It, it affected the whole air war that much. You know, you, you, when you do it in 100 days, you do what you can do. And when you start getting coverage like that, it, it was absolutely, uh, you know, so rewarding. Despite the successes of the modified satellite, the then black agency NRO could claim no credit, even if three years later, NASA could. Actually, it became the model for later NASA birds. And NASA invented it three years later, but the NRO was using it for, for, for three years. 